Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Mark here. Just wanted to give you a bit of an update on things that have been going on over the last few weeks. Uh, really pleased to say that I've been out and about uh, virtually, of course, uh, not physically at the moment, meeting lots of people um, and getting to know what's happening across all of our amazing services. I do look forward to being face to face with people soon because I'm really keen to see uh, some of the amazing work that's going on out there across St Helens but in the meantime I continue to enjoy a really warm welcome and getting to know people across the place so uh, really really enjoying that. So last week we did say a fond farewell to our DPH Sue Forster who um, who has decided to retire after a very uh, illustrious career and a challenging year last year and it was an emotional goodbye I have to say that lots of colleagues joined in and said some wonderful words of support and best wishes and it was topped off by what was an amazing poem by Roger who I think just really captured the mood for us all so uh, so we wish we wish Sue all the best. Ruth has now joined us, Ruth Duplessy, as the uh, Director of Public Health and has started already. And I'm looking forward to working with Ruth and also working on tackling some of those really difficult inequality issues that we have right across St. Helens. Vaccine programme is going uh, from strength to strength. So across the borough now, we've delivered just over 100,000 first doses and more than 20,000 second, uh, which is brilliant, uh, huge effort. And as a borough in the care sector, we have one of the highest uptakes of the vaccine in the northwest, actually. So 95 percent care homes, care home residents and 88 percent of uh, care home staff have had that life saving jab. And I think it's up to about 90 percent of staff at uh, St. Helens and Knowsley teaching hospitals have also had their vaccine. So we're doing really well. We're doing really well in St. Helens, which is fantastic. And any health and social care workers who've not yet received their jab, please make sure that you do that through your employee or you can speak to your GP. And we had our very own uh, clinical lead, Dr. Hilary Flett, uh, saying a big thank you to everyone who's come forward to take their first vaccine in a really timely way. Uh, and for everyone to continue to make sure that you come back and get your your second dose. And if you've not heard by um, certainly 11 weeks after your first vaccine, then contact your GP. And we're also putting on a mobile vaccine bus. So this is going to launch this week and it'll be out and about in communities. So we're going out to people um, and asking the question, have you had your vaccine? Clinicians are on site with primary care. And uh, if, of course, people are eligible and will agree to, we'll make sure they get their vaccine as well. So just something on work for. So I spoke to you last time around the implications for our staff across the CCG with some of the changes that are going on. So there's unlikely to be any significant national or, or regional guidance until the second reading of the bill, which is supposed to be around about June uh, time. So the healthcare partnership or the, uh, the integrated care system as it is now, the ICS, uh, put out some recent communication, which I think was really helpful because they committed again to retaining, supporting and developing the wealth of talent uh, that we have across Cheshire and Mersey and particularly uh, across St Helens and give people choice and opportunities in terms of the new ICS. But they also talked about preserving and protecting employment. So I hope that gives a continued reassurance to CCG staff that although roles will always be evolving to meet patient needs, that I hope this demonstrates that you, our staff, are our greatest asset and I want to make sure that we get that right for you. Moving on to reset and recovery. So we had our first meeting um, last week uh, just to pick up uh, the kind of clinical side of this and looking at the NHS planning guidance and submissions and making sure we're pulling all of that together. So there was a, a key discussion around growth for the future, including work, workforce planning. And we know that's one of our biggest gaps. So we need to look at that right across uh, health and social care. And primary care across uh, all key areas as well. We've looked at how we can support the new ways of working because we know GPs are working in a different way now. So offering uh, e-consult and, and looking at kind of unmet need and how we can build in capacity at the same time as uh, vaccination clinics continue. Um, and also there's uh, some additional work that's starting now to support our primary care networks, which is key. On the integrated care 
partnership the board will meet for the first time this week so that is on tuesday and we again will look at our three priorities around mental well-being obesity and resilient communities and then i will chair the program delivery group on the 4th of may which will then start to pull that together with we'll have key people that are going to take responsibility for that and also get that work plan up and running so we're planning also a uh, mental well-being summit so for me, it's really important we get this right and we deliver on what we say. So the summit will contribute to our priority, both in terms of mental well-being, but also the inequalities agenda as well. So, um, so look out for the invite. It'll be coming soon. And in relation to the ICS, we continue to work really closely with them in terms of our uh, plans for commissioning. And I want us to think place first and then consider what can be done at an ICS level. So I want a bottom up approach so we can continue to build on our success of uh, local integration. And finally, just on a slightly lighter note, uh, Ian Stoddart, our CFO, joined the uh, executive leadership team last Thursday, not expected to because he was off uh, on paternity leave. But he joined us to introduce his beautiful baby daughter, born just 30 minutes earlier at home. Um, and mum and baby are doing really well. And, and Ian looks like a very proud dad. So we wish them all the best. And as always, a massive thank you from me and the uh, exec team for everything you continue to do. So keep safe and look after yourselves.